this process was initiated uh, you know, now um, almost two years ago and uh, went through a fairly uh, rigorous uh, set of steps including uh, a very systematic literature review that uh, you know identified uh, hundreds if not thousands of uh, papers uh, that then had to be kind of uh, uh, pre-reviewed to uh, determine whether they contributed evidence for these evidence-based recommendations uh, and then uh, through multiple steps with the um, the expert panel as well as uh, the three co-chairs uh, reviewing these uh, articles and coming up with uh, a formulation of the recommendations that could be based on, on the evidence that's been um, uh, published in, in uh, uh, hundreds of recent studies. The pathologist is part of a healthcare team and the pathologist is the doctor who receives the biopsy or other tissue sample and makes the diagnosis, whether it's cancer or not, what type of cancer, and other features about the cancer that may be important to the patient's prognosis or outcome and their treatment. So the pathologist has a very crucial role in terms of how a patient is treated and what may happen to that patient. The advent of the molecular pathology means that the pathologist now has a very new role in terms of selecting the patients who may actually benefit from these new therapies. The, the most important recommendation is that EGFR and ALK testing should be offered on every patient with advanced stage lung cancer regardless of clinical variables such as smoking history, gender, or ethnicity. One of the other um, important findings in recent years has been that um, if you don't test patients for these two abnormalities, EGFR and ALK, and you just give everybody chemotherapy, the patients whose tumors contain, for instance, these EGFR mutations um, do significantly worse with chemotherapy than they would with the targeted therapy. So you're actually doing harm by not testing patients for these abnormalities. And very likely the same thing is going to apply to uh, the subset of patients whose lung cancer have, have, uh, has this uh, ALK gene fusion. I think the things uh, that oncologists should keep in mind is that this is something that requires an active interplay and discussion between pathologists and oncologists in each center taking care of patients. That the oncologists need to know what kinds of molecular tests are done, what the strengths and limitations are, and they need to engage the pathologist in a conversation about which tests to use and when to use it. We have made recommendations where data was extremely clear about what should be done, but we left a number of issues up to the institutions caring for the patient to make a decision in their best interests. And that should be done prospectively on an institution-wide basis, not managed case by case. Lung cancer is the number one cancer killer in the United States and in the world. For the first time, we now have a therapy to offer to patients that can prolong their survival, that involves molecular targeted therapy, and therefore this promise of improved survival is something that is very exciting for the patients and their doctors, their families, and uh, will hopefully have a big impact eventually on lung cancer itself.